I think it's an absolutely natural progression from that. I mean, if you look, Kobani, we was, uh, I believe October the 4th was around when we were saying that it was about to fall, highly likely it was going to fall. There was a big momentum behind it from the IS surge. That has come into a stalemate now, and as we know, there's been winds with the Kurdish uh, retaking a significant hill. At the same point, we now have the U.S. dropping weapons in there. They almost had to respond in a way with a propaganda piece like this in order to re-establish themselves and show how effective they are. And what they did and what John Cantley said in there that was very interesting is the idea of inter integrating doubt by saying, for example, that the Western reporters weren't anywhere to be seen, trying to trying to uh, make it look as though the reports coming out of the Western media aren't quite as accurate as the ones on the ground that they're reporting. But does this and that's play up very to traditional does, propaganda. Does this influence Western youth, like disenfranchised youth or, or loners looking for a cause, Neil? Um, I don't know if this piece would as effectively as some of their other pieces. I mean, as we know, one thing that IS have done unbelievably well is they've manipulated the messenger to suit their target audience. And that is one of the ways in which these kind of things resonate. So when they're looking at recruiting foreign fighters, disenfranchised youth, a lot of their pieces put front and center these young individuals. If they're looking at recruiting females, and I know that's been a lot of the talk recently, in the propaganda pieces they're putting females front and center. They're very, very good at changing the nature of the communicator in order to increase the impact that it has on the kind of person that they're trying to communicate directly with. Okay, Colonel Reese, you know, John Cantley, as I said in an introduction to you, he has said in, in his initial video that he was coerced. And now, you know, ISIS is using him, who is, he's a hostage now. Uh, he's been there for two years. He was captured in 2012, portraying a news reporter. So do you think that he is still, obviously he's being coerced here, but Stockholm Syndrome, would that play into this at all? Yeah, Don, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm a, retire, I'm a retired Delta Force operator, and one of our major missions was hostage rescue. And due to the years we conducted hostage rescues in Iraq, several of them, we would see these hostages after the fact, after months, after years, you know, and you know, they're, they're put through all types of mental uh, turmoil and stress that they have to deal with. And think about being held hostage for two years and now your hostage, uh, you know, the hostage takers, the people you, who are holding you, want you to do something. And if you do it, they're not going to beat you anymore. Or they're not going to threaten you to death. So why wouldn't you try to put on a great perspective? And that's where the Stockholm Syndrome comes in. And we've seen this through years as, as a former Delta guy, you know, uh, rescuing hostages. Well, let's talk about this because, you, you know, we also learned more about ISIS and their hostage methods from a New York Times article this weekend. It detailed the mental and physical anguish of, of foreigners being held by ISIS. You liken this, though, these ISIS methods to Al-Qaeda. How so? Well, you know, Al-Qaeda has, they have moved their messages along. You know, we saw very early on they were, they, they were brutal, and ISIS has started to get brutal. And now as they start to develop, they start to see some blowback uh, back from the brutality across the board, even from some of their ISIS members or from the Sunni um, extremists that are supporting them. They start to see some blowback, so they start to look for some different ways of messaging other than the brutality. How much, Neil, does this get through to the hostages? Um, are they aware of that? Do they think that Westerners are aware of their plight? How much of this are they seeing, do they know about? Sorry, could you repeat the question? I lost the connection there. The hostages, how much are they aware of if Westerners, do they think Westerners are aware of their plight? How much of this gets through to them? Do they know about media coverage, what the government is trying to do, so on and so forth? Uh, quite frankly, I have absolutely no idea the degrees to which hostages' access to information such as this is controlled or not by IS. I and mean, that is kind of operational security that isn't really released to the open source. Cor Colonel, what do you think? Do you think they're aware of that we know about their plight? Well, again, Don, you know, from our experience, what we've seen in the past is the hostage takers try to control the information that the hostages mm -hmm. have. Um, but at times, you know, there's people that are guarding the hostages that will start to slip them information. But to watch, you know, CNN every day, I don't think that's happening. But their captors certainly are watching news reports and they're very Absolutely. aware of it. Yeah. So, uh, Lieutenant Absolutely. Colonel Reese, ultimately, do you think that Cantil, um, Cantley, excuse me, will be, they're going to share more of these videos? We're going to see more from him in the coming 
month or week? Yeah, Donna, I, I do. I, I think what we're going to see is a little change here. I mean, again, it's, it's impressive. I mean, they are taking, if you really take a look at, you know, how they're using the video, they're taking that just right from the U.S., from the, the Navy SEAL videos, the Marine Corps videos, the Army Ranger videos, all those things that address the younger generation and watching the video and when they jump around and, and, and the plights coming out from the different areas of town to show and the, and the, um, and the ISR type of thing, the, uh, the drone over the top, that, that, that attracts the younger generation and really draws them into what they're doing.